Hey everybody, welcome to uh, our uh, MR Online Basketball Coaching and Referees uh, Clinic. Uh, today we are with the coach Piaz Yanaris. Uh, uh, we are with uh, him uh, for the second time and we got the uh, brilliant uh, feedback uh, for the first time. And uh, it's my big pleasure to have you, coach. Uh, let's get started, please. Thank you very much, first of all, coach, for having me again. Uh, it's my pleasure to, to share ideas and knowledge with uh, fellow coaches. And uh, as uh, we can all see, today we are talking about attacking pick and ball uh, switching defenses. So we'll say a few things. Uh, firstly, about the switching defenses in general. And uh, we'll talk uh, about the concepts that the defense uses to switch and how, in which conditions and situations and everything. But we will emphasize on uh, pick and ball switching differences. And uh, we can start uh, with uh, our first uh, slide. Um, and uh, something which is very important for us uh, before we start preparing uh, to play against teams that uh, switch, uh, we need to know we need to know the following like first of all is what these are things that we have to keep in mind before preparing or facing anything that uh, will try to switch against us uh, so the first thing that the the defense need to do is uh, to force us out of our initial offensive plan especially if we are a team that uh, it's very five on five, let's say, orientated, and we like to run uh, our system and we are very, um, if, if you want to say, very devoted to our offensive system and we run a fluid offense, uh, the defense try to switch to force us out of our, our initial offensive plan. They try to force one-on-one -on -one situations, ISO, isolation situations, as we call them, uh, from inside or outside. Uh, that, that is why they want to stop the ball reversal from side to side and ball movement from inside outside. A good a good structure offense uh, has very good ball movement, very good spacing, and the uh, the teams usually move the ball from inside outside and from side to side. So the difference by switching, they try to make us run isolation games and stop this ball movement. Also, they start, they try to stop the extra pass if we are a good team creating and uh, attacking the gaps and finding the, the open man, they try to stop the extra pass in this way. The last thing they try to achieve uh, by switching is uh, force us to shoot the ball on late shot clock situations or unusual conditions. It's, uh, it's not easy for a player or for a team uh, to try attack keeping in mind that uh, you only got seven, eight seconds to attack if you are not prepared. We will see later that having seven, eight, ten seconds to attack, it's a lot of time. But if you are not prepared and if you haven't worked for that and uh, you don't know what you're supposed to do in switching situations, having left six, seven seconds on the clock, then it might force you to do something that you're not used to doing. So the other thing we need to know is uh, how they switch uh, related to their positions, to their sports. Okay, I mean, if they're switching guard to guard situations only, if they're switching guard to forwards, if they're switching one to five, because most, most of the teams nowadays, they, they have uh, very mobile and athletic big guys. So they're switching every position. We need to know how they switch according to the positions on the floor. Also, we need to know how they switch in relation with the screens. We are facing too many off-ball and on-ball screen actions uh, in, the, in the game. So we need to know if uh, the opponents are trying to switch only the ball screens, they're trying to switch the screen aways, the turnouts, the exit screens, the flares and everything, especially if we are talking about high-level basketball in Europe, you will see most of the teams uh, trying to switch all the turnout screens against shooters, uh, all the baseline exits against shooters, against uh, JC Carroll, let's say, for uh, Real Madrid, or uh, uh, so many players. And in the NBA, all the exit screens for uh, Steph Curry, all the teams try to switch them. So we need to know 
how they're switching according to the screens. The next thing we need to know is when they switch. Because we're facing teams that uh, they might start switching from the beginning of the offense in every screen. And we might face a team, which is the most common thing, that they will start switching at the end of our offense. Mostly the last 10 seconds, and uh, especially on ball screens. So we need to prepare about this as well, so we don't get surprised on the way they will start switching. And uh, the last thing is that we need to know how they switch on special situations. Uh, we're talking about special situation screens, like uh, Spain pick and roll, ghost screen, and like that. Most of them are, uh, are on ball screens. So uh, these are some uh, situations that happen rarely in the game, very few times, but uh, because most of the time run offenses like that in special situations, in uh, end of uh, shot clock situations, end of quarters. So we have to be prepared and we have to know if the defense is going to switch some of them and how they're going to switch. Now, uh, in general, I'd say we, we split uh, uh, the the ball screen the, the screening situation and the switches uh, on the screens in two main categories we are talking about the off ball screens and we are talking about the on ball screens uh, we will uh, present a few options uh, against off ball switching differences we'll see some clips but here we will emphasize on the ball screen switches and how we build our offense and prepare our team against that kind of defense it's very important uh, the, the methodology that we will follow, building our offense and emphasizing in, in little details. So every time that we will face a switching defense and ball screen switching defense, we will be ready to react on that. About the ball screens, uh, a few things that are very, very important. In modern basketball, almost 70% of the offense involves uh, pick and roll actions. This is insane number. It's really very, very big number. Some of them are actual and act, an active uh, ball screen situations, trying to create uh, something out of it, or, and some of them are, are fake situations or entry, uh, entry actions to get into your play or anything. But as a matter of fact, 75%, it's a very, very big number. In the basketball game, let's say with uh, 75 to 80 possessions, we have more than 100 ball screens. It's uh, very usual to see uh, the big guys sprinting on the ball screen, getting back, diving to the basket, then sprinting again to the ball screen if nothing happens, trying to create a mismatch, a switching uh, situation, or an advantage of that. And, and these numbers actually increase every year. So. Uh, every year, there is more and more ball screen actions involved in, in a basketball game. Uh, these are also some numbers that are very important so we can understand how much uh, in high-level basketball they use the ball screens and uh, what they get out of it. Because it's very important to see the, how, how effective uh, this thing is in modern basketball. Last season in EuroLeague, 28.4% of the offenses we are executed either from the ball handler or the screener in pick and roll actions. It's nearly 30% that we are actually executed from the player with the ball in his hands or the player setting the screen. Also, another 14.1% from either direct or indirect creation from the pick and roll players to cutters away from the ball or shooters. That means that we also got points for uh, from pick and roll situations, from players that let's say the screener make a short roll, we feed the screener the the roller, he catch and he make an extra pass, and the other player will score. So we get uh, another 14.1 uh, uh, points uh, from from all these situations indirectly, basically from from pick and roll. Uh, all that uh, gives us uh, almost 45 percent of the possessions of the points scored in a basketball game. If we exclude one-on-one uh, -on -one situations, offensive rebounds, fast break, you can understand that this is pretty much what's left. So what that the teams ask themselves when they try to prepare, it's 
like how we can stop or at least make more difficult the execution of the 45% of offenses that happen in a basketball game and they are based or at least they involve pick and ball action. What we can do to make this 45% of the points uh, getting scored in a basketball game harder for the offense to score them. What we have to do is switch the pick and roll. So now, which ways we use and how we attack against the switching differences? Uh, this is something that we have to keep in mind. It's also very important. We, here we are talking about switching differences. We will start talking about some concepts uh, off ball, some off ball switches, and then we will go to the ball screen switch and we will emphasize how we, we build that and how we work and how we try to take advantage of that. So, first thing is using drag screens in transition or bad matchups, a way to attack a team that uh, runs a lot of switches on defense is to catch them off guard. The, the first uh, way, the, the, most, uh, the easiest way is when we push the ball in transition, usually in transition, the matchups are not proper. So we try to read the, the, the advantage that we can have uh, on a mismatch uh, on the transition situation, and then we go directly to the mismatch. We can see this clip here. So we have mismatch outside, mismatch inside. They prefer to attack the outside mismatch. You see the boomerang pass. We will talk about that later. And we take that shot. The next clips, you can see drag screens in transition. Why they are very important and very effective against uh, switching differences. The difference is uh, out of uh, position. There is not so good uh, communication in, in the transition situations and uh, the help side is not ready for anything that goes wrong. So as you can see here, defense is off guard. The screener's defender is too far away. He cannot switch, he cannot react. So the ball handler easily uses the drag screen and attacks the basket of the mismatch and gets easy layups. So the second and the third thing are uh, similar. We're talking about uh, second way of attacking the switching defense is always attacking with passes and cuts with good spacing and timing. Uh, regardless of the switches, uh, we have to keep our composure. We have to stay uh, very focused uh, on, on our spacing and our, our timing and use uh, back cuts and attack the defense. Also, attack with discipline based on the initial plan. Uh, some teams they don't want, they don't care if the defense switch on them. They believe that if they stick on the initial plan and they keep their movement and they keep their offense, they will manage to find a way to get uh, to the basket. And uh, like it says here on the clip, everything comes out on the watch. Uh, on the watch. So it means like we work on it and it comes out. We stick to the play and we see the results. As you can see from these clips, the, the teams keep moving the ball, keep attacking one closeout after the other. They have very good spacing until they get the chance to get to the basket. Again, we have a pick, we have a switch, attack the first closeout, we got nothing. You see the spacing is very good. They space out properly, get the defense off their guard, off their position, attack, kick out pass, open shot. So the next thing, we use cuts behind the defense. Uh, we can cut behind the defense uh, of the ball screens. We can cut behind the defense when, we, when they switch on off ball screens. A very good way to, to use this uh, backdoor cut, it's elbow flash and backdoor. We pass the ball at the elbow and uh, it's a very, very easy way to use back cuts uh, from that path. You see, we keep moving. The trip defense try to deny. They try to switch and we have slips. You will see uh, on the next clip how we use 
screens and slips uh, to attack also the switches. Uh, fifth is using fake screens and slips, like we said before. We can use that with pin downs, with post split, or with ghost screens. Uh, these actions might take uh, place uh, between guard to guard or be between big and guard. You will see here, again, we are talking about, first of all, attacking in general the switching difference. Uh, we will emphasize and we'll go with more details on the ball screen switches uh, later on. For, uh, for these few clips, here you can see the difference trying to switch everything. So we run a ghost screen or running slip, uh, as we say it, as we call it. Here is from between a guard and a big. The, the big fakes the screen, basically, and he slips at the empty spot. Here is between guard and guard. If there is no actual screen, there's bad communication, so somebody will be open, definitely. Same thing happens here uh, from the Golden State Warriors between Steph Curry and Clay Thompson. Let's see this one again. Okay, see, here we have another way attacking the off-ball switches. As you can see, we have a back screen and a slip. They are switching, the, the, the defensive team here switches everything. So when the screener seals and cut to the basket like that, he'll be wide open. Another very effective way to attack and punish the switching defense off ball. We have screen and seal and slip. Screen, seal and slip to the basket. We are basically between the defender and the basket, so that makes everything easier for us. Here we have another action with five players open. We said a flare pick and a slip. So as you can see, the same situation. Different try to switch off ball. It's very easy for the screener to even fake the screen and slip to the basket. No need to set a good, a strong screen immediately. Fake the back screen, the flare screen, and slip to the basket. This is a very common action we use. Uh, and uh, it's a pin down screen and slip. And the last one that we, we see very, very often lately, very, very often, especially if we got big guys that can pass the ball from the low post, we pass the ball inside and we have the post split. Guards or the perimeter players fake the screen between each other and they cut to the basket directly. They replace, if they got nothing, they run over and over again. They replacing, keep replacing, keep cutting, and keep diving to the basket. So that's another very, very effective way to attack uh, the switching defense when the defense switches off ball and they try to switch everything. Also, here is uh, another way to attack the mismatch. So again, we're talking off ball. We are talking off ball, but we, here we, we actually punish the mismatch situation, either from inside or from outside. We setting, by setting a back pick from small to big and popping out, we try to attack off the penetration, finish or create. Again, the switching everything, of course, our guard outside have a, has advantage. We use this advantage, attacking the closeout defense, and we take it to the basket by finishing or creating. Also, another situation is a direct pin down and switch. Now we are looking to punish the inside mismatch. The screener sealing immediately and trying to take the small guy to the basket one-on-one. -on -one. If the defense doesn't help, they get punished. If the defense helps there, then we're looking for the extra pass and force uh, rotations and uh, an open shot. Another very effective thing that can take place in a ball screen situation as well, but it's more common to see it on off ball uh, screen situations. We screen our own man. As we said, on turnout screens, usually a baseline exit uh, for shooters, defense tends to switch, big or small, they don't care, and they try the screener's defender to jump out and deny the shooter. So in order to avoid that, to avoid that, we set a screen on our own man. When the defense is ready to switch, 
We screen our own man, we pin our own man, and the shooter is wide open to take the shot. We can see some clips here. See Kevin Durant screaming his own man, Steph Curry is wide open to take the shot. It's a simple pin down situation, but with the right movement, we get the shot. Here you can see Lonzo Ball from here already calling the switch. So Kevin Durant is ready to screen his own man. Lonzo Ball stays back. Steph Curry gets an open shot. Now we're going slowly, slowly to the ball screen situations. Uh, one way of attacking and uh, punishing the ball screen switches is attacking opposite the screen and finishing or creating. I think the best player in Europe, uh, if uh, I'm wrong, uh, correct me, in doing this uh, the last few years at least, is Vasilis Panoulis from Olympiakos. I think he's the best player in attacking away from the screen and beating his defender because most of the defenses, he's a very good, excellent player on, on, on ball screen situations. So most of the defenses switch against him and they try to make it hard for him to attack. So he usually fakes and attacks opposite the screen, as we will see. Hold on. As we will see in this clip right here. Coming on the stagger, faking and attacking opposite the screen, taking the ball to the basket. This is a very, very good way to attack and punish the ball screen switches. Defense is ready to step out and switch. Spanulis make a fake, attacks opposite the screen, and has an open lane to the basket. The other thing is, uh, when we go on uh, attacking, it's uh, clearing out the paint, isolating our big against their small. So, here, we'll see a clip uh, from Jalgiris. They basically have a side pick and roll. They're switching the ball screen and immediately they isolate the big guy inside with proper spacing and uh, they attack the inside mismatch. So as we can see here, it's a basic diamond set. We will watch it later. The big guy goes under the, the switch and he seals the defender there so he got more space to receive the ball. The other big guy flashes top so we have a high-low situation, wide open paint, uh, so the big guy can take advantage and uh, attack inside. Second option that we can have on a ball screen situation, how we attack. We said the third option, basically. We said, first of all, we're attacking away from the screen on ball screens. Second, we use the ball screen, we drag out the big guy, we open the paint, very good spacing, and we try to pass inside to our big guy. The next thing is we drag the big guy out, the defender out, and we try to attack him with the small from outside. As you can see right here, necessary for us to always use a boomerang pass. What is a boomerang pass? When we swing, when they switch and we keep the big guy on the ball handler, the ball handler immediately will pass on the wing and receive the ball back immediately. The wing will, will not dribble with do nothing. Why are we doing that? Uh, a big guy stepping out to guard is not comfortable. So the minute he will be off the ball, his natural movement is to step back and get closer to the paint. So with the boomerang pass, receiving the pass back at the top of the key, we catch the big guy on a closeout situation, off balance, and we got more space to attack him and uh, take him to the basket. You will see here on this clip, uh, it's very clear. We have the ball screen situation here. We force the switch. We have Kevin Love with Mitchell at the top of the key. One, two passes, boomerang pass. You saw Kevin Love stepping back and uh, Mitchell getting the chance to attack him uh, immediately. I'll put it one more time because it's very important to see the uh, the reaction of uh, of Kevin Love. Sorry for that. Technology doesn't help us. Okay, let's go. So again, 
You can see the switch here. There is a pass, boomerang pass. He receives the ball back. Kevin Love moves back. He attacks him on a closeout and he takes him to the basket easily. One more clip. You can see the same thing. One, two passes, attacking the closeout of the big guy, taking the ball to the basket, getting the space that he wants, the guard, pass, pass back, and attacking. Always finishing or creating. So for us, we insist, if we are going to attack on the outside mismatch, we insist that we need to use a boomerang pass first. So the next thing that we can uh, take advantage of if the defense switch the ball screen is attacking closeout situations. It doesn't have to be a closeout situation from the ball handler or from uh, the, the player, let's say, with the ball in his hand. We can attack and take advantage of this uh, closeout situation from any other player. Because once they switch, there is, uh, there is no very good balance on the defense. Everybody tried to overhelp, jumping closer to the ball handler because they know he has advantage against the big guy. So they tried to overhelp, and that gives us the opportunity to attack and punish uh, closeout situations. Here, this team, they run a double ball screen to force the switch. We can run any, any offense, any, any play we need. And uh, the first defender here, you see, he tends to overhelp. So immediately, we don't even need to attack on the actual mismatch. We make a kick-out pass, and we attack the closeout where we finish or we create from that, uh, from that action. So now, we presented the ways that uh, we can attack uh, a switching defense, whether it's a, an off-ball switching defense or a ball screen situation uh, switching defense. Now we are going to to emphasize on the ball screen switches, and we have to check and we have to see and make sure the important role of the coach during the preparation of the team for this kind of situations. Because as we said, if we put ourselves and if we put our team in a situation that the defense will switch out of the blue for us, the last seconds of our offense, and we are not prepared for that, then, uh, believe me, we will have a big problem. Uh, if the players are not convinced uh, and they, they don't believe in the process and the, the plan that you, you have set, uh, preparing for these situations, they start going back to their old and bad habits and uh, most of the decisions that they will make, it will, they will be wrong. So, as coaches, what we do, initially we emphasize in practice all kinds of similar situations. Any situations uh, that we showed above, uh, we have to include them from time to time in our practice, uh, either in special situation uh, parts of our practice or as a uh, as one part of, of the main uh, scrimmage in our practice, we set rules and uh, we include all the situations so we can be ready to react on them after we teach them. Uh, it's very important to convince the players about the procedure, as we said before, and the plan that we want to follow. Practice helps the team react naturally in unnatural conditions. So, as we said, once we practice all these things and all these concepts, and uh, we get uh, into a game situation where the other teams will switch, it will be very easy for us to act naturally in what somebody else might feel it's unnatural, all these switches and all these scramble differences. Also, we need to convince our players that the remaining time for our offense is more than enough to execute our game plan versus the switch. Uh, it's very, very often that we see players uh, hearing from the bench 10 or 8 seconds left and uh, start panicking with the ball in their hand. Uh, that, that will uh, all, always cause a bad decision and uh, uh, most, most probably will get punished on the other end in transition. So the players have to know that uh, these 6, 7, 8 seconds that we have 
because we've prepared good enough uh, our, uh, what we need to apply our plan against the switches and be effective. Uh, we need to convince, and this is something very, very important, we need to convince our star player to involve everyone in our offense without having to attack alone every time. Uh, it's a fact that in clutch situations or in uh, difficult situations, we want the ball in the hands of our best player. Uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, this player should every time try to attack and get scored from this uh, mismatch situation. Uh, it will make his life easier and it will make our, our team more effective if he, he realizes that uh, without him having to take the ball to the basket every time and scoring every time, uh, he can be twice uh, as dangerous if he creates uh, on any other situation like we showed before for his teammates. And, uh, and finally, we, ha we have to, to help our team understand that we don't necessarily have to attack from the mismatch, but also create of that. As we saw before, even before attacking the mismatch, one kick out pass to catch the defense off balance, or attacking the first close out, making a pocket pass inside, or a kick out pass to the next open guy, that's good enough for us to create conditions uh, for a good shot and for a good decision. Some things about the rest of the players, uh, except the player that has the ball in his hands. Uh, all the players should be in a stance and ready to react and execute. Sometimes we see, and uh, we can watch that very often in basketball games, at late clock situations, when the ball is uh, in the hands of, let's say, the best player of one, one player, any player, other four players are standing there and waiting for him to just make the play. This is not what we want. Uh, we have to convince our team and make sure everybody is ready to get involved in the play. Because the last couple of seconds, if we are able to make a kick-out pass and create an open shot uh, with a good situation and good conditions, this is what we want. But if the player is not in a stand and is not ready to execute physically and mentally, then it's like turning the ball over. And everyone should know that the most dangerous player is the one with the ball in his, in his hands. And that's not because we want him to finish every time, uh, but we want him to create and make something good happen. We don't look, this is, this is very, very important because especially the younger players, uh, you give them the ball in their hands and they, they feel like they have seven, five, six, seven seconds to attack. They will either try to finish or they will look only for the fancy assist pass. This is something that, especially, as I said, for the younger players, is very common and it, it, it's very wrong. We have to make sure that we keep it simple. We keep it on the, on the guidelines that we gave in practice and that we get everybody involved. Well, uh, a big coach said that uh, at closing game situations, instead of having a very good play, I prefer to have a very good player. This is what we want. But that player, as we said, doesn't have to act selfishly. He can attack, he can finish, he can create, and he can make things happen for us and for the team. Uh, also, the second most dangerous player is the one that sets the screen. Because uh, when the defense switch and we look for that mismatch, the inside mismatch, He's the player that will either finish or create for somebody else. So basically, they are the two main players that will either execute or create after the pick and ball situation when the defense switches. This is something that uh, we don't pay a lot of attention at, but uh, it's probably one of the most important things against the defense that switch. We have to include in our preparation the, the offensive rebound. It's very important and a very big weapon against switching defenses. Uh, and uh, we usually will have advantage uh, at the offensive glass because uh, the, team, the defense switching it means they keep a small guy against our big guy inside. And that gives us one more extra position. 
Um, let's say um, Coach Ivkovic, from what I know, he usually likes to attack the outside mid match. And most of the time with good shooters, trying to break down the defense's balance, create separation and shoot the ball because he believed that he always get one more chance with the offensive rebound uh, and the inside mismatch that he has. So as you can see here, we got a shot, the big guy running on the board and he punished the small guy, offensive rebound, easy bucket. Again, we have switch, we have a big, buy, big guy under the basket against small, easy rebound and easy putback. Same switch here, even if we attack, big guy follows and you have a putback there. So it's very important that we also keep that in mind and we include in our preparation uh, the offensive rebound uh, so we are ready and we are focused on attacking the offensive glass every time. And finally, so we, we can be effective uh, attacking the switching, uh, the ball screen switching situations. Uh, all the players should have an internal clock. Uh, they, they, they should be able to know the time and not waste it in unnecessary dribbles of movement. Again, this is something very common and uh, very important. We need to see, as I said before, we need to keep it simple. We need to have our game plan, our spacing, our positioning on the floor, our roles, and we need to know what we do and how we do it. Too many between the legs dribbles or fancy inside outs and all this stuff, I think they help the defense adjust. They just wear us out, they make us tired, and we are not as effective as we should be when we attack uh, the mismatch. And plus, but the most important thing is we waste very, very uh, valuable seconds from our shot clock. So uh, cut down the extra movement, keep it simple, and attack the basket properly. Now, there are a few basic principles uh, that we need to, to con consider, uh, basic principles and conditions to take into consideration, as we said, uh, so we can prepare against uh, ball screen switches. Okay, it's uh, very important for us to, to separate all these switches uh, in some more groups. Like before we separated the switches, if they're switching according to position, according to the, uh, to the time in, in the offense, um, uh, according to the screens, what screens they face and how they switch. Them. So now we need to know when we talk specifically about the ball screen. Defense switching and we have less than eight seconds left on the shot clock. It's important to recognize after the different switches what we can have in our hands. For us, my philosophy, our teams, my teams, uh, when we have less than eight seconds to attack, we prefer to attack with the outside mismatch. That means with the guard from outside, attacking the big guy and uh, trying to, to finish or create. It's very important that uh, if we attack from the middle, we still have four players uh, spread out on the floor. They don't stand still. Okay, we will see later on when we attack from the middle in some uh, um, diagrams, how we screen and how we move in order to give space and time to the player attacking from the middle so nobody will be able to help and he, has, he can play one-on-one. -on -one. So we make sure that we have other four players moving if we attack from the middle. If we attack from the side, let's say from 45, uh, we want to clear out the strong side block. That means the strong side low post man, we send him opposite, we send him on the weak side. And we try to create an attack from that side, having all the space uh, for ourselves. Always initiating with a boomerang pass and always attacking the offensive glass. I, we insist so much on that because small details make the difference. Always use the boomerang pass before we attack the mismatch. Always follow our shot and go to the offensive glass. 
Now, second thing, if after the switch we have more than eight seconds, uh, for us, the first option is to attack from the inside mismatch. Uh, if we pass the ball inside and we have more than eight seconds, that gives us the time, if we cannot attack, to create from inside outside the highest percentage shots, the highest percentage shots in basketball are the ones coming from a pass from inside outside. So every time we have a pass from the low post to a perimeter player, then we get the, the, the shots with the biggest percentage. We want to attack from inside. Uh, if we have more than eight seconds, because that definitely gives us the time, if something goes wrong, to kick the ball back out and attack from outside again. But if we pass the ball inside on less than eight seconds and something goes wrong, then we don't have the time to kick it back out and have a good option to attack uh, for the remaining time. Now, if the switch takes place at the beginning of our offense, uh, it's important to recognize because there are teams, as we said before, that uh, they switch one to five. They have uh, five good players, uh, almost same size, mobile, athletic, that can guard inside, outside. So they choose to switch from the beginning of our offense. In this case, we need to recognize and uh, we should be prepared and we should teach uh, our team to react against traps and rotations because uh, if they have a lot of time in their offense, it's very common. We try to fill the low post to be able to run and jump, to trap. So we need to be prepared, spaced out properly, fill the right spots on the floor, when we kick it out, attack the next closeout, make the next extra pass, have proper spacing, so we can uh, attack against all these kind of traps and rotations. And uh, also, if the defense now, using a triple switch, bigs in, smalls out, uh, as we say, uh, it's another part that we need to be aware of. And in this case, we look for back cuts behind the defense. If let's say we use a ball screen and behind the ball, we got a big guy, a four, while the, our big man tried to dive, the big guy from the corner would try to switch. So we got an easy back cut from the corner man to the basket. We'll see the diagram later on. Uh, if we want to avoid triple uh, switches. If we know, let's say we play with a team that constantly using the triple switch, uh, what we should do is put our next big guy in front of the ball. That means we use the pick and roll and we are attacking towards our four man. So we leave behind the ball a small guy. That will not allow the defense to go on a triple switch. And even if they do, we still got a big mismatch inside. So we put behind the ball a small and we put in front of the ball the other big guy. So all these things that we, we, we did talk about until now, uh, they, mainly they apply uh, on, on ball screen switches with the five. Okay, because most of the teams, most of the teams nowadays, they switch pretty much everything with the force. And uh, there's no big mismatch either inside or outside. So what we need to do, uh, if let's say we run a ball screen with the four and they switch that, and uh, we need to create a bigger advantage for us or uh, a bigger mismatch situation, uh, we set one more ball screen uh, with the five. It's, uh, it, it's very simple. We can do it like uh, we, we're running, uh, let's say, horns twist. Horns twist is a very common play, uh, but uh, we got two bigs at the elbows. We're using uh, a horn set, using the first ball screen from the four, and then coming back and using the second ball screen from the five, forcing the defense to switch everything. So we are attacking on the mismatch against the five. As you can see here, 
This is the first ball screen with the four. Defense come back. We're using a second ball screen with the five. And uh, Steph Curry beats the big man very easily. Again, first thing, screen with the four, second with the five. We attack from the inside mismatch. So that's why, as we said at the beginning, all the things that we're talking about on the ball screens uh, apply mostly uh, when we're setting ball screens and when we're switching with the five. Uh, that's uh, where we have uh, the biggest advantage uh, on the floor. So now uh, we are going to talk about the basic, because we said we need to prepare our team properly to be able to, to play against uh, a team that switches uh, on defense and on ball screen situations. Uh, the, basic, the basic areas of preparation for our team against the uh, pick and roll switching defenses. Uh, firstly, we use methodology with specific drills so we can create situations and execute automatically versus pick and roll switching defense. It's very important to get our players in a situation that uh, they can execute directly after recognizing the switch. If we have to think, read, react, and spend a lot of time on that, then uh, we don't have enough time left uh, to execute the way we want. That's why we're using specific drills and we put the team in practice conditions in situations like that so they can automatically recognize and react immediately. We start building our offense from two on zero with proper spacing until the five on five. Another key to prepare and be ready uh, against uh, the switching differences for us, it's to use simple man-to-man -man offenses with small adjustments. Uh, if we say that uh, we have like 10, 15, 20 set offenses for man-to-man, -man, five for, uh, for zone defense, and we got five, 10 offenses for switching defense, and this and that, you understand that that's too much for, for any basketball player. And uh, it makes our life harder than easy. So what we choose to do is use simple man-to-man -man offensive sets, very common ones, working on some small adjustments and some details uh, against switching pick and roll situations. And uh, then we emphasize on the details uh, that we want to, to apply uh, when the defense switch. We do not want to complicate things because as, as we told you, instead of attacking and punishing the, the opponents, uh, we, we actually confuse our team more and we make it uh, harder for our team. So we start building our offense with simple spacing drills, uh, starting from two against zero. We got a coach under the basket. We got the ball at the top of the key. And uh, we got one player on the wing. Attacking the mismatch from the top. Sorry. Attacking the mismatch from the top, driving right or left. Uh, that will give uh, the wing player space and time to make his adjustment. He will either space out or uh, replace. Uh, we make a kick-out pass uh, for uh, our guard, and, uh, and he executes. The, the passer now will run opposite, receive a pass from the coach, and he will use a fake, attack the closeout, and use a mid-range pull-up. It's very important. For us, we believe a lot in this uh, closeout offenses, attacking, faking, using a couple of dribbles and pulling up from mid-range. Uh, mid-range game, unfortunately, tends to disappear from modern basketball. And uh, we believe, I believe that it's, it's a very big uh, weapon and very important aspect. So I like to work a lot on that mid-range, attack, closeout and mid-range game. So the next one, uh, we switch side, pretty much the same thing. If we drive opposite uh, the wing, the wing will replace, we'll make a back pass to him, and then we space out at the corner, we'll receive a pass from the coach, and again, we fake, 
and we pull up uh, for two. Uh, next thing, we put uh, our ball handler at 45 degrees. We said we want to attack uh, either from the top of the key or from 45. We attack from 45. Our opposite wing always drops to the corner. We make a pass to the corner for a quick catch and shoot. And then we sprint at the top of the key again. Close out, offense, fake, attack, and elbow pull-ups. Elbow pull-ups can be very, very effective against switching defenses and against close out from the big guys. Um, the next thing is, uh, again, two against zero. Uh, we try to emphasize on something we said we use every time. So we have to put it in our practice. We make a kick-out pass and a ball reversal. We make basically a boomerang pass. Before we attack, we have the boomerang pass, we attack, we kick it out on the opposite guard who is at the top of the key now. So we got 45 and top of the key. Boomerang pass, penetration, kick out pass, and uh, space out to the corner, catch, fake, one dribble, mid-range pull-up. Now, we continue two against zero. Uh, because we say we need to work in every concept that we will face in the game. With, before we, we run uh, two guards, now we got guard and big. We said if we want to attack from the wing, we clear out, we empty this area right here, and we send our big guy on the opposite block. So from here, we attack either middle or baseline. The big guy makes an adjustment, receives the pass from the ball handler, and the ball handler does the same thing. Sprint up top, receive the pass from the coach, fake, attack the closeout, elbow pull up. Now we continue on the two against zero, but initiating the ball screen. Because it's very important to make the players understand how they should move after we initiate the ball screen and after they have to dive to the basket and be ready to receive, shoot, or execute. So we have basically a side pick and roll action, direct pass inside in the mismatch. We know that the defense switch. So basically this screen will be kind of fake and slip. So we make a fake and slip screen. We pass immediately to the big guy. Again, we sprint at the corner, receive pass from the coach, fake mid-range pull-up. The next ball screen concept situation, we use the ball screen, and as you can see here, we don't have uh, the direct pass inside. So what we have to do, come back, change our passing angle, let the big guy post up with the small inside, make this pass inside to the big guy, and then sprint to the corner, same thing, receive pass, fake, dribble, pull up. So now we're moving to the three against zero using the ball screen. We have two guards and one big guy. We need two coaches at the corner. So on every concept, we execute with all three players. We don't want to run a three against zero drill and one player gets benefit from executing with the ball in his hands. So we put two coaches at the corners, now we have a side pick and roll. We create a strong side triangle. So we immediately pass to the two man flashing top and the two man passes to the big guy inside for a finish. And right after that, the two guards will cross and receive pass from the opposite coaches to catch and shoot one time, second time, catch, fake, one dribble, pull up. Again, the same thing. We're using a middle ball screen this time. Okay, big guy flashes up top, sets a middle pick and roll. We cannot pass inside. We reverse the ball and we create a weak side triangle now. So number two is at the back of the defense now. So we hit him, he pass inside. Against the, again, the two guards We cross, receive pass from the coaches and execute. Third concept with the two guards and a big guy. Use the side pick and roll, 
come back, fix our passing angle, pass inside, big guys cross. So it's basically a two-man game with the third guy spacing in and out. He cannot receive. We pass the ball inside. We cross and we take three shots uh, as all three players need to get involved in the drill and be able to execute all of them. The next concept that we go using a three against zero players uh, offense is uh, that we put two big guys and one guard. We try to initiate uh, a side pick and roll with uh, the opposite big guy. As you can see, the ball is number one on the wing. We got number five coming from the opposite block, sprinting and screening uh, on the side. Now, four man should clear out make a small curve and flash up top. From here, we pass to the foreman and we go on a high-low situation. It's very important that on every case, we find ways uh, to, to pass uh, in the, in the big, to the big guy inside if we want to take advantage of the inside mismatch. Uh, so again, after that, uh, the, the big guy will, the foreman, after the high-low will at the short corner and catch and shoot uh, from the coach and the other big guy will sprint to the corner and use a handoff or a direct pass. We prefer to use a handoff from the second coach and pull up for three. So all these drills, uh, all the above, above concepts that we see after being executed uh, without difference from both sides of the floor. So. Uh, it will take us too much time to, to introduce all the drills and, uh, from, from both sides. Plus, you can include so many other drills. He, right here, we try to introduce very few basic drills uh, and simple drills. Uh, simple, but at the same time, very important to build our offense and to build the players' confidence, knowing where they have to move and how they have to move if the defense initiate uh, a switch. And we also execute all these drills, as we said, from both sides. And we also execute them with defense going from two on two, from two against zero to two on two, and from two against uh, zero to three against zero to three on three. So next, next thing we try to do, uh, it's something that we call the mismatch drill. We set our, uh, our teams uh, on half court, and uh, we start playing half court, and we... Here, we try to switch on every ball screen, on every ball screen. Our target is based on all the concepts that we showed before uh, to recognize and try to attack immediately every mismatch, whether it's an outside mismatch or uh, an inside mismatch. Okay, as we said, we try to set a ball screen, we switch on that ball screen, we switch on every ball screen. If we cannot attack the first one, if we don't get a big advantage from the first one. We set another one, we get the biggest advantage, and then we try to, to attack either from inside or from outside, spacing out properly and uh, being able to recognize all the situations. Uh, starting this drill, we prefer to stay half court. The first concept we want to do is to run this drill half court uh, for, for like 10 minutes, let's say, uh, stop and correct every time, change position every time. The next thing, after we feel like our players are comfortable enough reading, switching, and uh, attacking their switching defense, uh, we add one transition uh, on a defensive rebound. That means that the defense, uh, the offense misses the shot, defense gets the rebound, so we get one transition. After that, we can also add uh, three consecutive transitions up and down. So we make it even more difficult. And like that, they can also attack with track screens, with bad matchups on the transition and forcing the switch and again, uh, attacking the, the switching difference. So next step is uh, that we will move to simple and basic offensive sets, uh, offenses that can be used, again, Pick and roll switching defense. Offenses are basically uh, can be used uh, against one to one defense. But uh, if the defense decides uh, that they need to switch and uh, 
They want to force us to do something uh, uncommon. I, as we said before, uh, we make some adjustments and um, we attack from simple offensive set. We said we, we, we keep our basic principles and we'll try to analyze and emphasize all the options we can have against pick and roll switching defense. It's very important that we keep our principles and don't try to get out of our initial plan, but focus on the small details that will make the difference. And what I mean, you will see now. Here we're talking about a very, very simple horns play. If the defense decides to switch immediately uh, the ball screen, uh, we run horns and dive. Horns and dive directly, we look for the passing side. Uh, some teams will try to use the triple switch here. That we will deal later. But uh, dragging the foreman outside, especially if the foreman is a shooter, we use these uh, horns and dive immediately, and we can create a mismatch situation like you will see here. We create a strong side triangle. The ball goes inside to the big guy, and he attacks the mismatch very easily. Again, immediate. See, it's a fake, basically fake screen and slip. When we, we know that the defense is switching, we use fake screen and slip. We don't even need to fight there. Again, the big guy will seal inside, will take uh, advantage of the mismatch, gets deep and punishes the defense. Okay, this is a very simple play. This is something that we run very, very often. All the teams are all level. But the, the thing is that we need to know what we are looking from each play and how we try to get what we are looking from each and every play. Let's say here is a diamond set. We know that we have uh, the two bigs at the blocks. We have a turnout screen and we pass the ball to the wing. We, we, we need here to run a, a side pick and roll action. Okay, as you can see, uh, we initiate the side pick and roll with the five. Immediately, our point guard, after he passed the ball on the wing, he sprints at the opposite corner to space out uh, the floor more. We have a side pick and roll. The foreman, like we said, remember the drills we run three against zero with two bigs. Here we see it. We see it taking place here. This is the action. So side pick and roll, foreman, small curl, flashing at the top of the key, creating a triangle to pass inside. This is the first option we have, a high-low situation. Okay, here we can see a little similar play. The only thing is that the pass goes from the point guard at the top, but still the, the, the other big guy make the curve and the point guard pass uh, to the big guy inside. We saw that clip before. We open the, the paint basically. We clear out the paint. After the pick and roll and the switch, we isolate the big guy inside. And we're looking for this high-low, which is very easy, very simple, and very effective. Now, the next option we have, let's say uh, for us, we push our point guard at the corner. We have our two-man 45, and we have the four flashing up top trying to initiate the high-low. Let's say they deny uh, the foreman. What we do, they front the post, they deny the foreman at the top of the key. Uh, what we do is drag the defender out and then use a backdoor cut. Very easy, very simple. Timing, spacing, very important. We drag foreman out and then we immediately change our direction and we go inside with a backdoor cut to receive this pass and finish. Details that have to be taught in practice, have to be applied in practice, and we have to insist on them in practice. Next concept. The big man here on the four guy plays very good defense. Let's say. So we cannot uh, clash, we cannot use a backdoor. What we do, ball is on three with X5, our five man is inside with X3. We drag the big guy, the four man outside, 
as far as possible. We know he denies. We know he denies. So it's easy for us to drag him outside. That means we empty this gap here, the space here at the nail. We empty it for the opposite guard to flash. So this guy flash, he receives the pass, and he plays for the high-low. Again, timing, spacing are very, very important. Four months, step out, drag his man out because he's denying. Two, flashing at the nail, catching the ball, and going for a high-low. Next concept. None of that worked. Or let's say we got another option. Again, ball is on X3, on, on three with X5. Uh, X3 fighting very well with our big man inside. We cannot pass the ball. Four gets denied. We cannot pass the ball to number two, who is a good player and also can execute from outside. So our four man will sprint and screen away on X2. And our two will flash to the ball, catch and shoot. Remember what we said? It's okay not to execute directly from the mismatch. So it's okay if we don't execute with the, with the three or the five man. We screen away for two, he catch and shoot, and that gives us what mismatch? Five against three inside to go for the offensive blast and get a second chance if we miss the shot. Another very, very simple, so uh, as, as uh, of now, we, we just checked two very, very simple and very easy and very common uh, offensive sets. It's uh, a simple horns and a simple diamond play. So now we will run uh, a middle pick and roll play. Uh, we, can, we can call it uh, fist, we can call it whatever. Uh, you can call it anything you want. The play calls are to uh, each and every coach. We just call it fist, and we have a middle pick and roll taking place. So what we do, we got our point guard dribbling to the side. Five man is at the top. We swing it, hit the five man. He swing it to the four. Uh, the point guard flashes after a screen away from the five. And then... We return and set a ball screen uh, from the five to the one. Here we got immediate switch and we got uh, our uh, point guard against uh, the five man outside and we got our five man against their point guard inside. Uh, we saw a clip before, even from horns, we saw the same clip. The point guard hit the corner two and he hit the big guy inside immediately. The first option for us is a direct pass, of course. Second option is to create a triangle, as we said, and as we did at our um, uh, drills before, creating a strong side triangle or a weak side triangle. So we can either create a strong side triangle with a two or a weak side triangle with a four and just pass the ball immediately inside. So if that doesn't work for us, uh, our point guard, we dribble up to the top of the key, so we got more space to attack one against one. Remember what we said before at the beginning, we are attacking the outside mismatch. So if we are attacking from the middle, we need to make sure that the other four players keep their defense busy and they stay active. So we have enough time and space here to attack with our one against they are five. Always we should initiate the boomerang pass first. First, we initiate the boomerang pass to the four and back. Okay, we don't forget that. And at the time we start attacking from the top, we see five setting a back screen to two to fade to the corner in case we got another option for the open shot. And four. What is he doing? Last seconds, usually the difference what they do, they switch everything. So he's screening his own man. So one attacking. If he cannot finish, he can hit three at the top for an open shot. He can hit two at the corner for an open shot or even five flashing 
uh, at the mid post for a quick finish. Attacking from the middle, always after initiating the boomerang pass and other four players staying busy and keeping their defense busy. Second option we might have, it's uh, attacking from the wing. Remember what we said? Attacking the outside mismatch from the wing. Again, we got the boomerang pass to the four. We got our five clearing out, going to the opposite block. We have our two sprinting at the opposite corner. So that means the right side of the floor, all this area here is wide open for our quick falling down, for our quick ball handler to play one-on-one -on -one against uh, their biggest and uh, slowest guy. If they make adjustments and they try to help, we can see the five man as we show at the drills, uh, uh, taking a new position and uh, using the, the penetration and moving either middle or at the baseline, he relocates and three, four, and two also, everybody relocates and uh, moving to the gap, be ready to execute for, for the open shot. Now, we have another simple side pick and roll action. Uh, usually in that uh, cases, we run these quick plays or these pick and roll actions after offensive rebound. So, because we have at the shot clock 14 uh, seconds, by the time we swing the ball, uh, we hit our guard and we run a pick and roll. Uh, you know that we got like eight seconds. So defense will definitely try to switch on that. So running this side pick and roll, we force their five on our one. And now this is the triple switch that we talked about before. If our five dies inside and their four man tries to take the dive and one goes to the corner, what we need to do, remember what we said, if they're using triple switch, use back cut. So as you can see here, by the time that four will pick up the dive, one will get back to the four, our four man got plenty of space to cut behind the defense and catch this lob pass for, for an easy finish. Okay. Now, we said before, we know uh, that uh, the defense uh, will use a triple switch and we want to avoid this triple switch. So what we do, like this case, we put our foreman in front of the ball. So by running the ball screen here, we got a small behind the ball. They cannot initiate the triple switch. So we force them basically to play their point guard against our five man and their five man against our point guard. That gives us uh, the situation, the, the, the best uh, possible situation for us uh, to attack the mismatch, uh, to initiate the outside mismatch or the inside mismatch and try to get to the basket. So how we do it? Uh, here's the switch we set. Uh, we pass. We reverse it, we clear out, we pass, we reverse it, and we attack from the wing against either with an empty corner or the full corner. It doesn't matter as long as we've got space here to attack them as much. Okay. So, having said all that, uh, we are coming slowly slow to the end of, of, our, of our talk today, of our clinic today. And um, it's safe to say that the modern basketball switching defense, and especially pick and roll switching defense, uh, is applied more and more during a basketball game. Uh, we can see it in almost every possible uh, situation. Uh, it can be a big part of the game tactic plan. It's very, very important, especially at, uh, for teams at the highest level, that they got uh, quite mobile big guys and uh, very athletic and uh, they can apply as sometimes even as a main defensive concept. So for us, it's very important to include this in our initial and general tactics and not overload our players with a ton of different information. I'm talking as offense. It's very, very important to include this in the way we prepare and build our uh, team offense. Uh, but uh, as we said, we don't need to overload our players. 
We don't need to make extra plays and extra plays and extra plays for every different situation. Instead, we should give our players the ability to read and react in every situation with patience and, uh, and confidence. Um, it's also possible during a basketball game to face off-ball screen switching. Uh, defense, like we said before, we showed some concepts at the beginning. We showed some clips. And um, again, again, against teams with very good shooters, uh, it's very like to, to, to see that happen a lot. And as well as switches uh, versus our baseline or sideline out of bounds plays. This is also a big part uh, of, of, the, uh, of the tactic that many teams will either go zone or they will go switching on a baseline or sideline uh, plays. So it would be wise to initially prepare some universal plays. Uh, I think in Europe, one of the first coaches that did that was Coach Bradovic, uh, that uh, included in his uh, playbook universal plays that can be used against any kind of defense, whether the defense will switch, whether the defense will go from man zone, from zone man, and, and so on. So it's very important to have a couple of those uh, so we don't have to change and think and try to, to adjust every time, try to read and waste time and confuse the players. Uh, that was pretty much it uh, from me. I hope uh, we covered uh, a lot from, uh, from this uh, huge area because it's, it's really a huge part of the game, the, the switching differences. We try to emphasize a little bit more on ball screen switching differences. Uh, if there is anything uh, I can do, I mean, I'm open to any question and feel free to contact. Here will be my, my info, my WhatsApp, my email, and anything you need. Uh, so anytime, feel free to, to mail me, uh, contact me, and I'll be very happy to, to share or uh, discuss anything, anything further with you. Thank you so much, Coach.